Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Running Your Moss episode 28. Today we're going to talk a bit about what kills a lithium ion battery. Most of it's going to be about the round loose cells that we use, or external batteries. But we're also going to talk a little bit about lipos, which can be external, something we can replace, or fixed internal. Sometimes this shape put in a, a pouch, the pouch is kind of folded down and that's stuffed into a mod and the mod is sealed up. And sometimes the, the flat rectangular bricks you might have seen for a radio control car or plane use. Probably the first thing we should do is to find what's a dead battery. Because for me, there's two definitions and it may not be the one you think it is, the second one. First one, zero voltage, that battery's dead. Don't try to revive it, nothing you can do, it's gone. Recycle and replace it. The second is it has a voltage but you can't use it. It can't be charged, the charger will eject it. If you try to use it in a flashlight or a vaping device or anything, uh, it won't function. That will get into why, but either one of those, I'm gonna say is a dead battery because it keeps you from using it. Now, what kills a battery can come from misuse or mishandling. Mis misuse would be uh, using it too hard, discharging it too low, overcharging, almost like the electrically related things. Mishandling would be the physical things, drops, dents, and stuff like that. Those are avoidable. The unavoidable thing is an internal defect. Now, for the big manufacturers, Samsung, Sony, LG, Panasonic, Sanyo, the most often quoted rate I've seen published is one in a million cells. Now, that doesn't mean one in a million cells explodes in a ball of fire. It means one in a million can slowly fail over a month in storage to slowly discharge itself down due to a, a very soft short circuit internally or even in a day or six months whatever the cell ends up failing because of that self discharges down to a very low voltage and it's no longer usable a small percentage of those cells that fail might result have a hard short circuit and result in a fire or an explosion. Now that's typically after it's been used a while, abused, overcharged, charged while it's cold or something like that to force the growth of metal crystals that touch and short circuit, uh, things like that. It, this, everything that I've seen it says that's incredibly rare for a battery to do that, just purely on an internal defect from the manufacturer. Now, some of the round battery causes for a dead cell we'll go into here. And this looks like a lot of stuff up in the board. It's not technical. There's only going to be one photograph or cross section of the battery, but we'll just kind of go over these simple things that can kill a battery. And the first one is something called the CID. And the CID is an internal protection device that almost every battery or every battery we use better have it, but almost all round batteries are made with it. And I'll show a photograph, a cross section photograph of the battery, but a quick description of it here is you have the top contact sticking up, what you can see in the battery. Below that, you'll see a disc, a flat part. You may, you may notice a score line around the outside. That's the venting disc that can crack open if the internal pressure rises too high. And that'll be bowed down just slightly. And you may see a, a little navel a belly button in the middle there. Below that, inside the battery, is another piece of metal, kind of bowed up just a little bit. So those two pieces of metal touch, and that's where the current passes through. Now, if the pressure in the battery internally builds up too much, that bowed down venting disc will actually pop up like this, and you can actually hear it click when it happens. That will disconnect the circuit. So essentially, it's a mechanical fuse. It trips from overpressure. And typically that's going to be due to short circuit, actually boiling the electrolyte inside to increase the pressure. Uh, very, very hard use can also bring it up to a high enough uh, temperature to start to boil off the electrolyte or increase the vapor pressure inside till that uh, CID pops. Or severe overcharging can also create excess gas. Now, drops in vibration can create circumstances where you have an internal short circuit in the battery. That can lead to a high temperature inside the battery, which can also lead to gases being formed and the CID trips. So I mentioned you can often hear a click. If this happens, it's dead. <laughs> Don't try to do anything with it. Um, but this will result in zero voltage. The next is positive, excuse me, positive temperature coefficient or the PTC device. You also can see it as positive thermal coefficient every once in a while, but for what most I've seen is positive temperature coefficient. This is a disc. 
It looks very much like the top ring insulator underneath the wrap at the top of the battery. It's a thin, flat disc. This is actually inserted inside the top structure of the battery internally. And the current has to pass through this thin layer. Now, normally it's a very low resistance, but at around 135 degrees Celsius, yeah, fracking hot, it will turn into a very high resistance uh, material. And that will stop the current flow and allow the battery to cool. Now, it still has voltage when that happens. It's, let's assume the battery is still hot, but it can't be used because it's very, very high resistance. So you may pull this scalding, scaldingly hot battery out and check the voltage. It looks fine, but you're not able to use it. You shouldn't use a hot battery, but just in case you did that. But it does eventually reset if you let the battery cool. It doesn't reset all the way. You might get 90% of the performance of the battery back because it doesn't go all the way back down to its lowest resistance level. But most of us aren't going to worry about this because typically you only find it in the lower current rated cells. Because it has some resistance, if you put it in a 20 amp, 30 amp battery or something like that, it will interfere with the performance of the battery. It'll add to the internal resistance of the battery. So you typically only see it in like under 10 amp rated cells. Now it will trip like this one here a whole variety of uses. This one typically to short circuits and very hard use. This is purely temperature dependent, so you really got to rip at it uh, if you're just using it to get that to trip. But it can result in having a voltage but can't be used. But if the battery has cooled down and still can't be used with voltage, then there's something else that may be going on and we'll, we'll go into that. The next possible way that a battery can be killed, faulty spot welds. Inside the battery, there's a spiral roll of several layers and metal tabs coming out either side and one metal tab gets spot welded to the inside bottom of the battery. The other tab, positive tab, gets spot welded to that plate. This plate has a tab coming up to it that will come down, or excuse me, come up and touch the venting disc. So those metal tabs are often spot welded by hand. Some of the smaller China factories will do it by hand. Now the big companies, Samsung, Sony, LG, Panasonic, Sanyo, MoliCell, etc., with, with true assembly lines, fully automated assembly lines, those will be machine spot welded. But the smaller factories, that's done by hand and that, really, that could result in inconsistent spot welding. Now, if it is inconsistent or if they have too high a setting uh, for all the batteries and they blow through and there's only tiny bits of metal really end up touching, that can result in high resistance for that tab. So any current passing through it creates a hot spot, and that hot spot can break the spot weld, can cause gas to be formed, because you're boiling the electrolyte at that point, so it could actually trip the CID. But these spot welds can cause all kinds of issues. The tab can lift off, completely separate from the uh, positive or negative contact of the battery. So that's another possible problem. I haven't seen that a lot. Uh, I've seen it in a couple of cells, but it's, it really depends on their quality control. A lot of it can be individual, which particular worker is putting together a certain number of fa uh, batteries. They might come through, you know, he puts, goes through, I don't know, a thousand batteries, and they're all done at too high a setting or something like that. Well, those are going to be a problem, but every single other one from the batch might be perfect. It's really the <laughs> luck of the draw for that. Something that's become more a part of a lot of batteries is the, the separator or a safety separator. You've got the positive and negative part, positive and negative part of the battery, and in between it's a sheet of plastic to keep those from touching, short circuiting. That plastic is porous. It's called the separator for a very good reason. Now, then there's liquid interspersed with everything, and the ions flow back and forth through the separator between the positive and negative part of the battery. Now, at around 135 degrees Celsius, Somewhere in there, the pores of that separator can actually close and melt. That's a safety feature of the battery. That will block the ions from flowing. Now, short circuit or hard use will do that, or an internal fault, namely anything that brings the separator, the plastic, up to roughly 135 degrees Celsius. That does not recover. Once those pores close together from melting, they stay closed, the battery's dead. But at tiny little bits, Maybe uh, three quarters of it melted, and some of it's still, you know, this much is melted, but there's a little strip of unmelted around the outside or something like that of the separator. Well, you still may get a few ions flowing, so you still may read a voltage. 
but because you can't get any ions to really flow, the battery is not usable. Next cause of failure, battery vented. I'm not talking about thermal runaway, though the battery does vent during thermal runaway. Thermal runaway being the fire and explosion, complete decomposition and self-destruction of the battery. I'm talking just that underneath the top contact, you got that venting disc with the score line if it pops open. Now, if that pops open from a short circuit, really hard use or an internal fault, namely something that brought up to a very high temperature and tripped uh, either CID or just caused the vent to open up, that dries out the battery because now air gets in, which means the electrolyte, which is an organic solvent. Think, you know, super duper paint thinner. Uh, that can lead to failure because your battery's dried out. Now that might result in a voltage as it dries out, but you can't use the battery because there's just no liquid to carry the ions back and forth. This will end up being a failure and there's nothing you can do. Recycle the battery and throw it away. Now that liquid, if you smell a obviously chemical type odor near the top of the battery or feel kind of a slippery liquid, don't do anything else with the battery. Don't touch it. Get rid of the battery. You know, put some tape in the positive end or something. Put it in a Ziploc bag or something like that. Namely, replace it and recycle it. Excuse me. Um, the liquid is toxic. It, it's think of it as like paint thinner. It has uh, lithium salt in it. All these organic solvents. Make sure you wipe and clean off everything very carefully, especially your hands. Watch carefully. Don't touch anything else. Now, self discharge will be the last way we'll talk about it. And this led to what I was talking about with um, internal defects. The battery can just, due to a, a very tiny, soft, short circuit internally from a, a manufacturing defect or from hard abuse from overcharging or charging when cold, this can lead to the battery discharging down internally. It's got a little baby short circuit inside. Now dendrites is the term you may have seen. Those are the metallic crystals that grow internally from the positive and negative part of the battery or just from one side and can touch the other they poke through the separator because they're metal crystals and they're strong enough to go through the separator if they touch two sides of the battery are short circuit now if it's just a tiny little touch it'll just slowly bring the battery down if you get enough of those touching and they're big enough then you can get a hard short circuit and uh, thermal runaway and the battery can catch fire or explode now it should take years for a battery to self-discharge, but if there are dendrites or an inter other internal fault in the battery, it could be days or less. Now, this is different from what you see with devices draining a battery when it's off. The Yihai chips in vaping devices, Yihai company chips in vaping devices, draw two milliamps, two thousandths of an amp, even though totally off. That doesn't sound like much, but that's 48 milliamp per hours a day. Then a week and a half, it's 480 milliamp per hours just sitting there asleep. <clears throat> now, th that's a problem if you didn't recharge the battery before. So for devices, I always say, you know, take the battery out if you can, if you're not gonna be using it the next day, or even that day, just take it out. And then you don't even have to think about anything there. Now for pouch and round lipos, uh, being used in internal, well, either as, as bricks, being used in uh, big box mod, DIY box mods, or some of the uh, uh, companies that make box mods, or in internal battery devices that have either round or rectangular lipos in them, there can be some other ways. There are the variations that these cells can fail. Now, hard use or overcharging can create gas. Now, this is true for any battery, but pouch cells are uniquely vulnerable to this because that pouch, the, metal, the steel can, for a regular battery, keeps all the layers firmly together. They're all going to be stay in intimate contact, you know, no matter, almost no matter what, unless the top pops off. But with a pouch cell, those layers, as the gas is created between all the layers, that can force the layers apart. It essentially, can delaminate. The laminations or layers can come apart. That interferes with the operation of the battery, decreases performance, can lead to internal short circuits, self discharge, and things like that. That could be hard to use or overcharged, namely increasing the pressure, creating gas that delaminates de or separates the layers. You can pierce this pouch. It's just uh, plastic, aluminized plastic that they you know, weld together ultrasonically uh, together after they vacuum seal, essentially vacuum sealing the contents of the battery in for a round cell, then they'll 
fold all the pouch corners and everything over the battery and they have something roughly round for the bricks they'll just kind of fold the edges down heat shrink it now you got a battery pack if that gets pierced and that's very easily from abrasion from anything scraping against it even rattling around inside of an internal battery device that can be failure that's the same thing as the battery venting it dries out the electrolyte evaporates away you've got a dead battery always remember there's no protection for a lipo cell it cannot have the cid current interrupt device that trips like these cells for overpressure or the PTC device, which trips from over temperature. For lipos, you don't get it. We deter we're relying, excuse me, on the device itself to protect us, to make sure that battery isn't abused. And if we've got a, a box mod, we're taking out the battery, the brick, and charging it, then we have to rely on ourselves and making sure they don't get abused and uh, the wrap isn't damaged at all. Now, what to avoid? How do we keep from killing our batteries? avoid these things drops vibration hot and cold short circuits very hard use and denting pretty well just basic battery stuff because th this is what can kill it now things like dents and, and drops and vibration that can be cumulative you might go oh you know it's, i've never dropped it very far just a few little drops over the months or something like that that can start to add up uh, things like overcharging um, especially in the cold that can create dendrites, excess gas, things that gets damaged to start to accumulate, and all of a sudden one day you can't use the battery. You may have heard a term reviving a dead battery, and you may see some of the YouTube videos for that where you can actually take a tool and go in and reset the CID. Don't, don't do that. It is unbelievably dangerous to get a tool, poke it underneath there, trying to leverage your way in, press it, the positive and negative part of the battery, negative part of the battery is underneath the plastic there. It, it, it's very easily a short circuit battery. The battery is dead. The CID, the mechanical fuse, tripped for a reason. Just accept that battery's dead. So, it's, uh, so the CID can be reset but incredibly dangerous. Um, yeah, just, just leave it dead. I'm kind of wondering for the community, how common is this? It's happened to me a couple of times, uh, but I abuse the heck out of the batteries, testing them and stuff like that. But has this ever happened to you? Have you ever had a battery just suddenly die or even though have a voltage or the mod might go, yeah, okay, we can use this. And then even at the lowest power levels, you're not able to fire it. I'd be really interested to hear, you know, please comment below. Let me know if this happened to you. I'd love to hear or find out how prevalent this is, how many people run into this problem. And let me know what battery it is. Is it one from the big manufacturers or is it somebody, you know, uh, one of the China companies that, that wraps batteries? I'd like to find out. I hope everybody is remaining vigilant and I hope you and your loved ones stay safe. Thank you for watching.